Hello, I'm Tom Shepard, one of the technical team at Stillmagic, and in this video I'll be taking you through an architectural overview of our software defined storage solution, SVSAN. So what is SVSAN? Well, it's a software defined storage solution that's uh, designed for the remote office and branch office and lean IT environments. It deploys as a VSA or virtual storage appliance on top of the hypervisor, and we support VMware's vSphere and Microsoft's Hyper-V. And we inter turn the internal or direct attached disk of two or more servers into highly available shared storage. So the key benefits are lowering the cost by eliminating the requirement for a physical SAN and deploying on as little as just two servers without having a compromising effect on performance. And I've got management and support with integration with inside the hypervisor that allows you to do rapid deployments and manage the product centrally. And it's high availability out of the box whilst eliminating that single point of failure that you can get in a SAN environment. So SVSAN virtual disks can be mirrored between any pair of VSAs, like a network RAID 1, and then the storage is presented back into the hypervisor over iSCSI. As an active-active synchronous mirror, so the data can be read or written from either side, and the writes aren't completed until the data has been committed to storage on both sides of the mirror. This means that if one side of the mirror completely fails, then you have that redundancy. All the virtual machines can restart on the other host and the storage is there still accessible. We also have iSCSI multipathing in the product. So both hosts are interconnected with the VSA on the other host, which means that you can also power down a VSA, perhaps for a firmware upgrade or some maintenance changes. And the storage will still be accessible seamlessly without having to move any VMs around. So to complete the mirroring between the two servers and also act as an interface for the iSCSI traffic, we have a requirement for some dedicated networking. Now we support one gig and 10 gig networking, and as a minimum, we require a single one gig connection from each server to each other. But as a best practice, we suggest two or more for redundancy, and we can also aggregate them together to provide higher throughput. Now you can connect them together with a switch, but one of the really nice things about this is a two node solution, is that you can bypass that and just connect the servers directly together with a patch cable so you don't have to worry about having to uh, purchase or manage a switch and it can also remove a single point of failure and it brings that footprint down um, to an even, even smaller. So the VSA itself is essentially just a virtual machine that's based on Linux and sits alongside your other guest VMs on top of the hypervisor. It installs on some local storage, and it's been built from the ground up to be incredibly lean on system resources. So it requires only a single virtual CPU and one gig of RAM for the basic mirroring requirements. Uh, we like to say that SVSAN is hardware agnostic. So any hardware that's on the VMware hardware compatibility list and Microsoft's equivalent is suitable to run SVSAN on. And the storage that you configure inside those servers can be anything from large capacity SATA drives, 10K SAS, 15K SAS, right up to enterprise SSD drives for fantastic performance, and also JBOD arrays. Or any combination of those disks can be used. Perhaps you might have some SATA drives for large capacity for backups, and some SSDs for a VDI environment, for, for example. Now we also have an SSD write back cache feature, which allows you to use some SSDs in front of some magnetic drives, so you can get that performance uh, increase over all of your magnetic array so it will take a hundred percent of the writes improving the performance and it also has hot block technology so that you can get a, a read performance increase as well any writes that are recently written into the ssd and are flushed onto the back end but they're still in the cache because the room's available for them will also then be read from the ssd so you can get that improvement on your read performance as well so many hyperconverged platforms require three nodes or more, and SVSAN is more unique if it can work in a cluster as small as two nodes. One challenge presented by this is that if the two nodes for some reason lost connection with each other, they wouldn't be able to determine whether the other node had failed or if they'd simply become isolated from each other on the network. To ensure that the cluster doesn't get into a split brain scenario and that uptime is kept and data consistent, then our software includes an arbitrator or tiebreaker service called an NSH or neutral storage host. 
Now this NSH can be run on uh, Windows, Linux, uh, such as your vCenter server. And we also have an NSH appliance, which is a bundled together virtual machine and a build for Raspberry Pi machines. So the NSH can be run either locally or on a remote site, uh, perhaps a central data center. And if you are running it on a remote site, then the WAN link that's required to connect to that, uh, you only need nine kilobytes of bandwidth and it can withstand up to 3000 milliseconds of latency. So you don't need high performing WAN links for that remote connection. And a single NSH can serve uh, as, a, as a quorum for thousands of mirrors across clusters. So if you've got multiple sites and you're running your NSH in a central data center, you just need the one. SVSAN can be centrally managed and monitored from the data center. And we've got integration both with Windows and with vSphere. Uh, so we've, through that, we can do wizard-based deployments of the VSAs and creation of the storage. And then once deployed, you know, from monitoring, we've got SNMP alerts, email alerts through SMTP, integration with Microsoft System Center, and also our own StoreMagic dashboard that sits with the vSphere web client with the same sort of look and feel as vSphere, which allows you uh, great visibility of all the clusters you have. If you want to get any more information there, you can just simply double click and, and it will bring up the relevant uh, interface. And then we also have a scripting toolbox so you can do the deployments, the storage creation, uh, any configuration changes, and also upgrading firmware all through scripting. And that's done through a PowerShell module that integrates very nicely with VMware's Power CLI and, of course, Microsoft's PowerShell products. SVSAN now comes in a couple of editions, standard and advanced. The standard version comes with all the rich features for software-defined storage, uh, the mirroring between the BSA, serving that back as a virtual SAN using iSCSI, and also things like our BSA restore, uh, the remote shared quorum, all of the um, scripting that we have there. And the advanced edition brings in some powerful uh, caching solutions. So that's using the SSD write back cache and also a new product, which is our memory based recaching. And that comes in a few different modes, uh, the most frequently used mode, read ahead and data pinning. And then under that, we have our intelligent automated tiering, which I'll talk a little bit about more on the next slide. Now the licensing is based on capacity and is a perpetual license. And the maintenance support is mandatory for the first year and then can be extended to three or five. And the capacity levels for the licensing are two, six, 12 and unlimited terabytes. And that capacity is based on the usable capacity you have after the mirroring and not the raw capacity. So SVSAN 6 Advanced comes with a new feature, the intelligent automated read caching and tiering. So all read IOs are monitored and analyzed, and the most frequently used data, the hot data, is placed at the top of the stack into the RAM or memory. And the cache tiers are then populated based on the access frequency. So at the top in the RAM or memory, we have that most frequently accessed data. And down from that, we have the SSD or flash storage, which is the next most frequently accessed data. And at the bottom is the magnetic drives, the hard drives, which is where the infrequently accessed data or cold data is stored. The cache can be sized to meet the requirements and we can grow caches as the working sets change. And you can use any combination of memory, SSD, flash and disk. And this is really great because it plays to the strengths of all the mediums. So at the top, you have the memory with the highest IOPS and the lowest latencies, so you can get that data as quickly as possible. And on the bottom end, we'll have the uh, SSD flash or magnetic drives, which providing that low price per gigabyte. In summary, SVSAN is going to eliminate downtime by synchronously mirroring that storage across multiple servers without a single point of failure. It's going to eliminate planned downtime because the product can be upgraded seamlessly and you can replace hardware without any impact. You can centrally deploy, manage and monitor the product and also automate that through scripting, making it possible to centrally manage this solution over thousands of locations without a requirement for local IT resource. And SVSAN will save you money by eliminating the physical SAN in that simple two server configuration 
And with all that less equipment you're going to have in the racks, you're going to also going to have a much lower power and cooling bill as well. So that's SVSAN. If you'd like to find out more information, then have a look on our website where there's lots of interesting stuff to look at, including more videos like these, or get in touch with one of the team. I'm Tom Shepard, and thank you for watching.